Yo, 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 welcome to Hard Pass. I am your host, Jacques Slade. It's the show that acknowledges that while Taylor Swift has every right to call herself the man, we here at Hard Pass recognize Becky Lynch as the one true the man. Well, her and Ric Flair, woo! I gotta really work on my wrestling catchphrases. Anyway, uh, let's start with some hot takes. People with too much time on their hands are freaking out over a Puma sneaker that they believe represents Hitler. It's likely another social media hoax that you really shouldn't be paying attention to. Honestly, I'm more worried about this real chart from the CDC that calls that mustache the toothbrush. Like, really, CDC? You really think we were giving Michael Jordan a hard time for that Hanes commercial because he was rocking the toothbrush? No. It was because he was rocking a Puma sneaker on his face. Log off of social media, kids. Uh, it was only a matter of time, but now even Spike Lee is feuding with the New York Knicks management, also known as James Dolan's fragile ego. The new policy will not allow Spike to enter into Madison Square Garden the way he has for the past 20 or so years. Spike was not happy. For 28 years. Yeah, I just want to make sure that we have No, that that's a made, lie. So they made that up. They made, it, it's Garden Spin. As a Lakers fan, I should be gloating and telling everybody that that Staples Center management would never treat Jack Nicholson or Denzel Washington like that. But then again, we have championship banners from this century, so we're a little more chill around this part of the country. Speaking of championships from this century, welcome back Steph Curry. Even though I could never root for his team, I'm still glad he's finally back after a hand injury that kept him out for most of the season. I'm genuinely worried about how the Warriors are gonna reload next season with a healthy Klay Thompson, a fired up Draymond Green, and whatever they're gonna do with D'Angelo Russ. Sorry, I mean Andrew Wiggins and their future top lottery pick. Hey Spike, I know you said you were done with the Knicks for the rest of the year. Why don't you come on over to the best side, you know, where the owner is not going to be all up in your music videos singing or at least trying to sing. Come to death for... Uh I mean, I mean, come to California, Spike. And speaking of Draymond, he is now the newest Converse athlete moving over to the Nike-owned brand as they expand their roster. People forgot or were too young to remember, but Converse was the biggest sneaker brand in the world during the 70s and early 80s, signing everybody from Magic Johnson to Larry Bird to Isaiah Thomas. Even MJ wore Converse in college. I just hope we get a Converse cipher for this generation like this classic one from back in the days. Oh, for the kind of moves. It never fails. The weapon's the choice of Kevin McHale. Who knew Kevin McHale had bars? Full disclosure, I have never watched a single episode of either The Bachelor or Love is Blind, but somehow I know through osmosis that the apocalypse is coming because both shows have been objectively trash and people can't stop watching. But it has given me an idea for a show called Hype is Blind where sneakerheads have to blindly pick a pair of shoes designed by Tinker Hatfield, Virgil Abloh, Jerry Lorenzo, and Kanye, and the winner is the one who can make their pick the most popular on social media. Basically, it's a race to get a Kardashian slash Jenner to wear them for the most part. And now, uh, this past week, we saw the first ever matchup between Zion Williamson and Luka Doncic, two of the NBA's young, bright stars. In Zion, you've got Shaq's body, Dominique Wilkins' explosiveness, Magic's charisma, and Sam Perkins' like deep threes. In Luka, you've got LeBron's skill set, Jason Kidd's vision, Kobe's confidence, and Dirk's old team. It's doubtful you'll ever see them guard each other outside of a switch on the defensive end, but even this early into their careers, they look like two players who are destined to do this for a very long time both in the regular season and in the playoffs. And Jordan Brand has got to be loving every minute of it. Within months of each other, both Zion and Luka signed with Jordan as the brand's next generation. No disrespect to the Chris Pauls and Carmelo Anthonys, and even more recently, the Russell Westbrooks and Blake Griffins, but the Zion and Luka coming has the potential to be as huge as when LeBron and Kobe became Nike athletes in 2003. They are the standard bearers already, rocking multiple players' exclusive versions of the Air Jordan 34. One of Zion's PEs, the Bayou Boys 34 is set to release this week, while Luca has been spotted in hyped retros for his pregame walks, which in some circles is more important than the game themselves. So now the question that should be on everybody's mind, including Zion and Luca, should they get their own signature shoes? Even Mark Parker, former Nike CEO, was cagey about it when he got the question as to Zion's future, opting instead to give a boilerplate answer that leaves us all with more questions. If Zion and Luca were both at Nike proper, the answer would have been obvious. Of course they're getting signature shoes. But things work a little differently over at Jumpman. And their past history with giving players signature shoes has not been as fruitful. You can be big, larger than life even, but you're gonna have a hard time trying to eclipse MJ himself. Dwayne Wade learned that the hard way, and now he has a lifetime deal with Li Ning. 
Mellow and CP3 were early on the bandwagon, but their entire lines have mostly been forgotten. Russell Westbrook is trying his best to be the exception with his why not sneakers for on court and lifestyle purposes, and yet you have to wonder if his days as a superstar in the league is going to be able to keep pace. Zion and Luka are at the age where they don't have to sign a signature shoe deal right away like LeBron did, but the waiting game has started. Let's see if Luka can maintain his MVP caliber play and hope that the days where we have this brief moment of fear and terror every time Zion jumps up the dunk are going to be a thing of the past. Uh, P.S. Apologies to Jason Tatum, who also signed with Jordan Brand around the same time and could potentially be as good, if not better, than both Zion and Luka when all is said and done. It's time for the Heat Check, a comprehensive, in-depth look at what's coming out this week, or at least it would be if the brands gave us more time to prep. Uh, first up, we have the Sakai Nike LD Waffle Nylon. These are dropping on March 10th for 160. They're releasing in both black and white styles. The nylon material makes all the difference, and I'm not sure if it's for the better, to be honest. Their closest cousin is the Summit White and Black colorways from 2019, and I like those by a wide margin, like the margin where Shaq's hairline used to start and where it is now. See, this is the Summit White and this is the nylon. I'm probably gonna get hurt for that line. Uh, we have the Air Jordan 34 Bayou Boys. They'll drop on March 13th for 180. Zion Williamson's first Jordan PE to drop has the New Orleans flavor with a Gator-inspired accent and the popping bright colors. These PEs are gonna look even better when he's a Laker in a few years. Yes, I'm already projecting and putting that energy out there for all of you out there to feel. I get it. Uh, next up, we have the Air Jordan 1 Retro High OG Zoom Racer Blue. So between this, the Jordan 1 Low Paris with a similar color scheme and the Dior Jordan 1 High and low, none of us have an excuse to not own a Jordan 1 in white or gray by the end of April. What I really need is a Zoom Air Jordan 1 Dior, but they won't give it to me. We also have the Adidas Yeezy 350 V2 Desert Sage. Those drop on March 14th for $220. To quote my boy CJ, Ah, merda, rieccoci di nuovo. Wait, that's not how that goes. Let's let's try this again in English. Ah, dirmo, ma snovo zdesi. Ah, you get the idea. We also have the Nike Dunk Low Kentucky. Those drop on March 14th for $100. Uh, I'll take Instant Clout for $100, please, Alex. Uh, we also have the Nike Dunk Low Syracuse, which drops on March 14th as well for $100. Instant Clout for $100 again, Alex. Going for that daily double. Then we have the Nike LeBron 17 Kids Sprite. These drop on March 14th. Uh, a little something for the younger sneakerheads there. This unofficial Sprite-inspired colorway actually has me hopeful that Nike will bring back the original Sprite LeBron 8 Low in 2021. And then we have my pick of the week, the Nike SB Dunk Low Safari. These drop on the 14th for 100 bucks. Based on the iconic 2003 Atmos Nike Air Max 1 collab, which is based on the iconic 1987 Nike Air Safari, your next must-have dunk actually got a European release earlier this year and is now coming stateside to take that last bit of your refund check. All right, it's time for this week's Hard Pass, where we take a look at something in the culture that just needs to go, like people hating on a reported trade offer by my Lakers that would have netted us Derrick Rose in exchange for NBA All-Star snub Alex Caruso that just got reported now. Like, I don't understand the confusion here. Why wouldn't Detroit want an athletic freak of nature like my boy Alex? You missed out, 8 Mile. Anyway, this week our Hard Pass belongs to the Air Jordan 5 Top 3, Future Jordan Top 3s, and any other brand that decides to just mix OG colorways in the laziest manner possible. Possible. Like all good sneaker ideas, it started out as a curiosity, like the Air Jordan 1 Top 3 from 2016. Side note, yes, that pair is turning four years old this November. It was an interesting idea, combining the three most iconic colorways of the Air Jordan 1 and creating mismatching pairs to drive the concept home. For somebody who doesn't have the bread slash band Chicago or Royal colorways, this was a great way to have them all in one sneaker. And if your IG game is all about getting that sneaker clout, you can take multiple pics of these at just the right angle and pretend that you do have all three of the OGs. But for me, I kind of just shrugged it off as a one-off gimmick that wasn't gonna go anywhere, like the Houston Rockets getting rid of all of their players over 6'6", or the idea of Skip Bayless, Jason Whitlock, and Colin Cowherd on the same network. Hey, I was definitely right about one of those. Anyways, the top three Jordan one was a retro made for the casual fan, and I was okay with that. Since it came out during the time when the hype for Air Jordan one was soaring, the top threes promptly sold out and are now reselling for over $500 a pair. And since the idea did so well, it was only natural for Jordan brand to follow that up with a 
mid version and a low top. If you want to know if a new colorway or gimmick got over, wait about a year and we have shattered backboard lows, UNC SB collabs, and union adjacent mids, but more on that later. And to be fair, Nike and Jordan wouldn't be doing their job if they kept those styles exclusive and super rare. By spreading the love, you have the fans who only wear the originals and will pay resale to get them, and you get the customer who only buys a handful of sneakers a year and makes it count. He or she might not be exactly sure what the sneakerheads are into, but they know that those union adjacent mids are kind of similar to something that they saw on social media, and that's close enough. So off the success of the top three Air Jordan 1, we got the What the Air Jordan 4s. And may the sneaker gods have mercy on those who bought these thinking they were going to sell them all to support their desire to post wild fit pics that will get them on the IG Discover page. So now we have the top three Air Jordan 5s. Interesting that they would skip past the Air Jordan 2 and 3. In my head canon, I know it's because the Jordan 3 is sacred and should never be finagled with that way. And the 2, well, the 2 is getting this rivals pair in women's sizes that I have to wonder if it was some kind of dare from the design team that went too far, like the time when somebody showed Kanye those clogs that looked like the Quiet Place monsters as a joke and it ended up becoming real. The top 3 Jordan 5 is a mix of the grape, fire red, and black metallic colorways, which sound like it could make for an interesting look until you realize that the color blocking for those three colorways were too plain. They really pinned themselves to a corner here, like when somebody steals a dance off TikTok and blows up but never credits the creator until they get caught. And to top it off, it looks like the top three fives won't even be mismatching. I could be absolutely wrong about this, but I feel like this is probably going to sit the same way that what the Jordan 4s did. Maybe if they had used more hype colorways of the 5 instead of the OGs, like what if we got a top 3 Jordan 5 that was part Raging Bull, part Tokyo 23, and part Supreme Camo? That would have been unprecedented collaboration and a unique take on a classic. Kind of like the Union 1s. Like, if you want to be super derivative about the whole thing, the Union 1s are a pairing of iconic colorways like the Black Toe mixed with the lesser known Natural Grey and the Bread Band and the Storm blue. It's basically a top two Jordan 1, but because Union and Jordan had a vision for it to be so much more than that, it became a phenomenon. If Union gets another crack at this, like they are rumored to do with the Air Jordan 4, we could have another mega hit to spend lots of money on. So I guess the hard pass isn't really going to the top three concept, but the top three execution. If Union or Virgil or my second grade art class was told to create an Air Jordan 5 top three, we would have nailed it. Yeah. That was me coloring outside the lines, like a real rebel. And that's gonna do it for the show. Thank you for watching Hard Pass. I am Jacques Slade, and I'll see you next week, but not before I show you how I want to retire, going out in a blaze of glory, like my homie Kratu, the rescue dog. I'll see you next week. Peace. It's almost a game. It's almost a, a bit of Mickey oh, taking oh, from the dog. Me. Now that's definitely against the rules. I promise you that I, I, wow. Because I'm a judge, you know, and okay. I, that is against the rules.